Hello everyone, my name is Mohamed Masroor and today we're going to be talking about the Malo Vincent. Today I'm going to be talking about the introduction of the Malo into the sun and we're going to be talking about the traits of the bridge. The first thing we have to talk about it is that the Malo of a bridge is in southern France that is the largest bridge on the planet right now and was constructed by the French by a French contractor. The construction of the bridge started in 2001 and was completed in 2004. Although they were thinking about this project since the 1960s. Its tallest mast is 336 meters, which is 16 meters taller than the Evil Tower. The Vincent Bridge consumed 127,000 cubic meters of concrete, 19,000 tons of steel before um, the concrete, and further 5,000 tons of pre-stressed steel of the cable and the shrubs. Also, more than 500 workers were assigned to the project, and the approximate cost of the project was around 300 million euros. The company who built the project um, thought of the, the I'm sorry, sorry, the company that built the project uh, asked the government to have the, the, the total amount of the toll, uh, which uh, each car pays, which is eight euros, I believe, uh, for the next 75 years. So they'll, they'll get the, to uh, the fee, which is the toll of the eight euros per car. And that's how they're gonna get their payments paid by. Also for this bridge, the main problem was is the engineering um, tried to solve a problem. And in every engineering project, the main thing is to solve a problem. Um, a, lot of the, a lot of the people who were um, going through this bridge uh, helped and like it really did help them. Uh, instead of going all the way down the hill and to the locals and going back, back and forth, so this bridge uh, prevented people from traffic, prevented uh, the locals from having a, uh, a really bad traffic. Uh, also, uh, the main focus for this bridge was to uh, um, have a straight uh, bridge that could just connect to different locations with each other. Um, as we explained, it often caused much disruption for locals and heavy traffic for visitors because this place uh, usually uh, they visit it on vacation because this uh, this bridge connects to important parts in Europe. Um, also, um, the bridge now is said to be the tallest in the world, and the bridge. Uh, uh, right now is counted as one of the best uh, engineering architect uh, construction in the world. The builders have claimed that the bridge should last for at least 120 years. Um, also, it is often caused a much um, easier uh, way to travel and people who who lives uh, underneath the bridge um, uh, are having a way better traffic. Also, let's keep in mind that the, the reason behind building this uh, bridge is to make the road more flexible and people could just go straight ahead to their place that they're heading to. And right now, I'm going to pass it off to one of my group members to be speaking, to be talking about the design. Hello, my name is Jason Lucas, and I'm going to be presenting on the design of the Malau Viaduct. 
First, I'm gonna start off with a general overview, and then I'm gonna jump into the design behind the cable stayed system, the pier, deck, and then finally the foundation. To start off, the Malau Viaduct was designed to be the tallest bridge in the world and is supposed to last for 120 years. It currently holds the Guinness World Record for tallest bridge in the world. It is a cable stayed bridge which means that it has cables suspended from the pier or from the pylons and attached to the deck. And there are seven piers used as the support system. To jump more into the cable stage system, there are 11 pairs of cables that are spaced 12.51 meters apart for each pylon. Um, and they help evenly distribute the load. The way they do this is that they take the downward force from the load on the deck and they apply it towards the pier and then the force from then goes down into the soil. And now looking at the design behind the piers, there are, uh, like I said earlier, there are seven piers as the support system and they all have the same height and uh, relative to sea level. And this isn't done for any particular uh, construction reason or design purposes. It just is only to look aesthetically pleasing. Um, pier one and two are the tallest in the world and they stand at 245 and 223 meters tall respectively. They still are the tallest piers ever built till this day. Uh, and finally, the deck rests on the piers. And above the deck, uh, the piers are split, and these are into two different pylons. These pylons are hollow metal boxes, and uh, this is where the cables would be attached to. Oh, and the uh, pylons. Um, all stand at 87 meters. Like I said, they all stand at the same height in order to be aesthetically pleasing. But now time to look into the design behind the deck. The, the, de the deck is designed with a trapezoidal cross section and it has webbing and the, they bring in webbing to increase the uh, structural integrity of the deck. And this is also done to help um, decrease the use of materials. Uh, the deck is built to have a two-way road with two lanes. Each lane is 3.5 meters long and they have a three meter wide um, emergency lane and a one meter wide shoulder on the inside. And the deck also it has guardrails installed to help protect the cars from winds. Since the bridge sits so high, it, it's, um, it sees a lot of uh, strong winds that could affect how cars travel through the area. And uh, finally, we're gonna look at the foundation design. Since the viaduct was built on the two different types of rocks, uh, which are limestone and marls. There are two different types of foundation units. Each foundation unit consists of four reinforced concrete piles that have five meter long diameters and are drilled about 10 to 15 meters into the rock with a thick reinforced concrete footing. You can see that there in the figure to the right, you can see the two different types of footing. On the left, you can see the uh, limestone the the footings on the limestones are going to be shorter than that of the ones in the marls marls um, that's because limestone is more resistant compared to marls so you don't need as long as footings for that um, oh and lastly the spread foundation at the end of the bridge uh, is there just to uh, connect the bridge from land to bridge. 
Okay, hello, my name is Leon Zhuang, and I will be doing the construction part of this presentation with Filiberto Barboza. Okay, so some background is that Milo is a commune in southern France in the region of Occitane, which borders the country of Spain. Um, since it's between Paris and Spain, Milo is often, is often used as a way to travel to Spain during the holidays, and that was causing a lot of problems. So a bridge was announced to be constructed to solve the traffic in the area. Okay, so some of the, or to start, um, the bridge was, this, was uh, when the bridge was announced to be designed and constructed, they had to build the bridge across 342 meters of land, which spanned the valley. And they had to connect between two plateaus on opposite sides, both of, which, both of which were made of limestone. So to do that, they needed seven pylons, which are basically tower-like structures to be built to support a bridge like that. So to build those pylons, they needed to build foundations for those pylons. So they started working on it. Uh, there were seven pylons being laid out. So seven different work foundations had to be laid out in the ground. So what they did was that they had to drill uh, uh, holes in the ground, which are also called shafts, and they're typically around 10 to 15 meters deep, and they were typically five meters in diameter. Now, as previously mentioned, since uh, each, where each foundation was laid was different compared to each other, each foundation therefore was a little bit different from one another. For example, as you see to the right, if it was dealing with limestone, the shafts would be uh, the shafts would be shorter, but it was dealing with marl, then the shafts would be, they would be wider. Once these shafts were made, piling, which is basically a metallic reinforcement solidified with concrete, was filled into each shaft. Each shaft, each of the four shafts were then bonded to the top by a concrete footing, which was uh, three to five meters in thickness. And this concrete footing was then bonded to the piers itself. And that leads us to the piers. So piers are basically the, the biggest part of the pylon. It's the big stony part on, under the bridge. Um, you can see them, especially if you have an outside view. The most of the, the right picture here, or all these pictures, show what the, uh, the piers look like. Basically, how they started building the pier was they made very thick concrete walls at the very base, with the, with the most thick being about 10 meters. However, this thickness tapers off as it increases with height. The piers are built from the base using one main shaft. However, it splits into two parallel legs moving, uh, moving later on, and they did it. They built the piers using two different methods. They use an R, an ARCS system, which is basically like a railway system, railway elevator, to build the outside of the walls while crane and workers move inside the wall to build the interior. And they move at the same, uh, same pace. So on average, construction workers are able to move about four meters per pouring. Stress was also uh, applied to the, con to the concrete uh, piers to uh, strengthen the resilience that they could have when they are in service. For example, they, had, they must be resilient against wind and temperature changes because um, they're the two most common factors that, they, that these piers will be facing when, when it's in service, when the bridge is finally complete. Horizontal pre stress was also applied. Um, the interior is, met, is lined up with certain slabs that not only uh, hold, not only uh, contribute to the construction of the pier, but also provide stress in the walls of the pier as well. So the tallest of the pier was pier number two at 245 meters, with the shortest being at 77.5. And this is what makes it the tallest uh, bridge in the world. And the last thing is the pier caps and abutments. So on, when the piers were finally built, there was a pier cap that was installed on top of them. It's basically like, basically think of a bottle and a cap. You put a cap on the bottle. That's basically how it works here. The bottom uh, picture is a very simplified example of what a, uh, a pier cap would look like. The pier cap was used to connect the deck of the bridge to the piers themselves. And as you can see, they're connect, the pier caps are connected to the piers through a tendon, as you can see here, and the bearing place where the deck would be held. Uh, at each end of the bridge was a plateau and for the bridge to meet the plateau, it had to be we had to use something called an abutment, which is basically like a large um, concrete structure that was used to help the deck meet the ground level of the plateau. And this little extended part is called a cantilever. This is how uh, 
the the deck itself met the floor and the the rest of the structure helps support the deck when it meets the when it meets the plateau and yeah that's it and then passing it to filiberto thank you hello guys i'm easy Lam. today i'll be resenting the collusion to summarize building a rich for a variety of reasons, we need traffic control to safeguard the safety of people nearby or in traffic. A road system devoid of traffic control brings more accidents and injuries. Design construct and maintain it to allow for safer, more accessible travel between locations. We also need to make crossing a body of water, valleys, mountains, and other obstacles easier. Making a rich can also create more just further involved in its design, construction, and maintenance. The Next thing is one of the world's toilet cable state riches was made in France, Miller Vedic, which cost a lot of money, almost 400 million euros. And it was also standing at an impressive 343 meters. The Miller Vedic Bridge was constructed to stop the traffic and plan to make the start, it was up to 10 years from uh, 1991 to 2001. The construction of it began in late 2001, complete in November 2003, and office solely opened in December 2004. So, Milo Vedas is so high that it lies above the clouds and become one of the prettiest riches with a text mostly everyone who loves to travel to Finn must stop by. It's you uh, 127,000 cubic meters of concrete 19,000 tons of steel for reinforcement and 5,000 tons of pre-stressing steel for cables and shrouds. The rich designers believe that it will survive at, at least 120 years. The viaduct is widely considered a rich technical and at Architecture it has won a uh, various uh, awards side um, in operation such as the 2006 Outstanding Structure Award from the International Association for Rich and Structural Engineering. The PowerPoint was successfully made that the risk was create perfectly, spend the town valley and slap the problem of traffic jumps around the area. Riches are benefit to us. The economic activity has increased now that drugs can travel more easily. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for listening. Hello everyone, my name is Laurent Sa, and today I'm going to talk about the impact of the Mila Vida. To begin with, I'm going to briefly talk about the Mila Vida. Mila Vida has 2,460 meter long decks, which is equal to 8,070 feet. It is one of the longest one in the world. And the height is 343 meter, which is equal to 1,125 feet and 
Uh, it is as tall as the Tour of Tower, but to be exact, it is uh, 19 meters higher than the Tour of Tower. The Mila Viaduct is located near the town of Mila in French, and it is built across the town and Derby River. All right, so let's move to the next slide. So um, there are many impacts of the Mila Viaduct, but today I'm gonna talk about, uh, I'm gonna uh, talk only two points two main points of the impact, so which are the impact on the tourism and the impact on the locals. So let's start with the local first. Okay, so the Miller Viaduct uh, was built to combat the congestion on the local road around the Viaduct. Before it was built, it often caused a heavy congestion. And one of the uh, the worst thing is that the local is really hard to cross from one river to another side. For example, uh, if they want to cross uh, the town or the Derby River, so they have to walk or drive across the wood bridge, which is so dangerous. And rather than that, they also have the option, which is to, you know, ride a boat and you know, riding a boat across the river that is that has the flowing water, it, it's, it's not really a safe thing to do. So having the, the Mila Vida bridge over there is really helpful. All right, and the second point is the impact on the tourism. So um, the, the structure of being huge is one of the things that attract the tourists to go visit. And not only the construction, but the scenic around the bridge also give people excitement that people not to miss when they go visit French. Also, Mila Vaidat is one of the best uh, place to capture the great uh, picture. Uh, uh, so according to the research, I, I found out that uh, more than 500,000 people around the year uh, go visit Mila Vida. And there are a number of, op of options available for the visit to Mila Vida Bridge, which are number which are number one, so they can crossing it in uh, by the car. And um, it's not worth doing unless uh, you can uh, unless you just want to drive through like a road trip, so it's fine for you. But uh, you don't get much of a view because of the barrier and you are not allowed to stop on the bridge. And the second point is that you can have an easy ride to the bridge by the parking in the town center and taking the tourist bus from Milau. And uh, it is one of the best options. So like in the picture right here, so the tourists, they can uh, go and uh, visit from uh, one side and uh, taking a picture or something. All right. Okay, and also you will be uh, enabled to uh, get the best possible view. The the in the night time you can see uh, down here. One second. You can see down here, it, it really has a nice view in the night time, especially during the holiday, like uh, Christmas time or uh, New Year time. Okay, and so that pretty much it uh, for my part, and I'm going to move, I'm going to pass it to my other uh, group member. Okay. Hello class, my name is Roberto Barbosa. And I'll be talking about the horizontal aspect of the Manao Viaduct. So first, the roadway profile plates weren't actually built on the job site. They're actually mass produced 
miles away from the job site. This served as a backbone for the bridge. The dimensions of the cases were 17 meters long by 4.2 meters wide. If you notice, the rectangular shape made it much easier for transportation. So once they transported these cases onto the actual job site, they would actually line them up in a vertical position and weld them together. The Scientific and Technical Center for Building tested the wind load and resistance for the bridge. And what they use is called the seismic approach. And that's basically calculations uh, for the safety and the health of the bridge. So if you notice, the nose of the deck carries the most weight and is curved a bit downward so that it is reached at a proper elevation. Also, if you notice, at the center, they construct and install what's called the PLC, PCL control system, which is a hydraulic system. And this is basically used for the launching of the Malawa Viaduct. So what this does, there's basically three modes, um, manual, semi-automatic, and automatic. Automatically, of course, is used to basically expedite the, the construction. Um, the three modes actually, if you notice, it would actually push the plates forward, the deck forward. It can also be lifted or raised so it could reach the proper elevation. So on the opposite side, which is not seen in the picture, um, they actually constructed what's called a recovery system. And basically at the end, they had to actually pull, pull the deck upwards. So pull the deck upwards so it matches the elevation downward. The decks actually each single deck can hold up to 900 tons of cargo in traffic conditions. And last, if you notice the cables here, so each single cable was designed, of course, by a design engineer. And these cables actually hold a strength of up to 2 million cycles. So basically you can hold the deck together and not break. <laughs>